Hi there, I'm Adrian and today we're going to ink this little drawing and I'm going to share with you a few tips along the way. There are a lot of techniques of inking, but the most cool in my opinion is the old school ink and brush. Let me show you the materials. Now this is quite straightforward. First of all, we will need ink. In my case, I use a Vallejo acrylic water resistant ink. It's a smooth but with a high grade of opacity. It's a nice ink for the beginners. I use a long hair brush. This is a personal decision. I like the line that gives the long hair brush, but I have to admit that it's quite frustrating sometimes because it tumbles a lot. Then you will need some napkins so you can uh, clean the brush in your hands usually. <laughs> Water and I use a little cup as a palette. In this case I'm inking a drawing from my watercolor color, coloring book. It's a coloring book I created for artists. When you don't know what to draw, you can use this with uh, markers. With, it's printed on watercolor paper, but as you might know, you can, if it handles watercolor, you can handle almost anything. Here I'm applying a, a layer of water by mistake because I was going to do it color first then inking but for this kind of drawing it's a lot more satisfying and cooler to do the inking first so I have to wait to let it dry and then I will start the inking when adding add water to the ink Bear in mind that uh, as you add water, the ink will have less opacity. It will run better, it will last longer in the brush, but will have less opacity. So you have to find the smoothest mixture possible without losing that opacity. Because that opacity is also what it gives the ink the water resistant property. In other words, if you put too much water, it won't be water resistant. And if you're planning to do the ink first, like I am doing in this drawing, you want to be water resistant so you can apply the water color without losing the crisp of the line. Always start with the less important elements and starting with leaves over here because even when you have a bunch of experience your hand will not be as steady in the beginning of the drawing like in much further in the drawing so start with less important elements if possible with organic lines like the leaves here if I make a little mistake it won't be noticed because the leaves are irregular and then work your way to the most uh, important elements of the drawing. In this case I'm using only one brush. I want to experiment how further can I go with a single brush. But in the next drawings I will combine brushes because if you want quality inking, if you want to have a unique uh, appearance, you will need to combine all the instruments you can to have the coolest line possible. Now that my hand is a bit more steady, I'm going to uh, start with the details on the robot. 
you will notice that I am adjusting the ink the viscosity constantly because it will get harder along the drawing you need to add water to that ink also when you draw in circles like the one I'm drawing here it's a good uh, practice to start from the middle and go to the exterior circle I can I'm not sure why but that works very good for me and uh, further in the drawing I go into do one backwards I'm going to go from the exterior in the interior and you will see the difference this line are very comfortable to draw since they're practically going along the wrist movement so they are very pleasant to make and very satisfying in the end drawing for me it's about uh, relaxing about uh, disconnecting from the problems of the world and that is also why I choose fantasy scenes like this one this is a lovely made illustration I enjoy a lot this deep punk like drawings because they are full of details if you're enjoying the video please leave the thumb up and consider subscribing to the channel Drawing has been a therapy for my stress and anxiety and with your help I can share this cure with the world. As you can see I am going all in with the details but without looking for perfection. It's a lot more fun just to go with the flow and let the brush guide how a detail will be. Especially with this long hair brush you, even if you want, you can not control it fully. It will go wherever it would want to go, but that makes the drawing with a lot of character, and it make it it makes it fun for me to draw like that. I like challenges. I like to improvise, and this kind of drawing with this kind of brush is very challenging and also in my opinion it's a very cool looking line what you can achieve with this kind of brush okay we are doing the final details on the robot little eye well not so little but it's eye maybe it's a scuba diving suit I'm not sure I just assume it's a robot it can be uh, like a armor from Far Cry Far Cry was the game <laughs> let me see that oh Fallout Fallout is the game I'm thinking with those uh, steam funk like armors so it can be a suit even though with that those arms it's a bit difficult to match a human being in that suit but it's a fantasy world it can work why not So you can see I'm experimenting with uh, lining to imitate uh, half-tone shadows. It's not my best because I'm still learning, but I assure you it's fun to try this kind of uh, shadowing.
Now controlling the thickness of the line with this kind of long hair brush is a joy. I really enjoy doing the different thickness of line with this brush. But it's important to uh, maintain a certain consistency in the ink. As I say at the beginning, you will add water to the ink because it will dry out during the drying. But you have to go drop by drop so you not uh, adding too much water. So you can have full control of uh, the thickness and the pressure will always do what you expect to do. Also at this point I would like to highlight the importance of using uh, good uh, paper, good uh, materials. I know you might, you might be a beginner, you might think my drawings doesn't work the materials, but I assure you it worth your time. Bad materials will make you waste time on things that it's really not your fault and it is the material's fault. I mean, bad paper will not give you the control you need to make a good line. Also, bad ink will do the same and the same with the brush. All artists have a lot of brushes because we just have a tendency to collect them but in the end we will use the best we have <laughs> in this case it's not the best but it's uh, not a bad brush I'm using here the brush I'm using here the brand is uh, Deco I think it's not a professional brush, but it's not a scholar grade brush either. And now I'm doing this background vegetation. And as you can see, I'm uh, a bit impatient to finish. But also, as it is in the background, I will not give the same amount of detail and dedication. It, this will create an effect that is like in the background, in the second plane. This low detail almost creates the effect as a, as a second layer in the back. And this is about it. I'm almost done. In the next video, I will going to color this uh, drawing. I'm not sure if I will go into with markers or watercolor either way it will be a joy we have a few more details there and uh, if you got this far please consider subscribing to the channel also you can visit my shop maybe you find things that you like there there is this coloring book I, cre I created in uh, paper as you see it in the video also in digital if you are a digital artist or just prefer digital to not uh, go to the trouble of having all the materials with you sometimes can be annoying As I say, I'm trying to imitate some of that uh, half-tone shadow with lining, with rough, rough lining. And now this is the final result. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.